Um, hey guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to do my special Q&A because I recently got 10,000 subscribers which is so crazy. But today's Q&A is split it into a few parts, like the first part is the about me part, then I've got YouTube, then study related questions. Let's start with the questions and I know you are all confused, why are you wearing something else? That's easy. I filmed this on another day, like the first sequence of this video, and then I realized I sucked talking and I also filmed it in the time-lapse function with my phone so I had to refilm it so that's why I'm wearing something else so the first part of this video is the about me part and the questions that I get asked the most are why did you show your face what's your name where do you live and what university do you attend so first of all all these questions are very private and I get them a lot but why did I show my face and why did I say my name? So there was actually a time on Instagram where I showed my face and also where people knew my name but to be honest I don't really feel like revealing my identity on the internet anymore just because I got a few more followers now than I had back then and with revealing my identity it would also make me uncomfortable because I actually share a lot of my feelings and my honest thoughts on Instagram more but also on YouTube and yeah I would be scared that people who actually know me in real life would just cover this channel and be like wait I know her and that's why I don't feel comfortable doing that I live and what university I attend to. So I don't really want to say what university I go to because of safety reasons. The internet is very big and you don't know who's watching and that's scary at some point. So the next question is, where are you from? Where do you live? <laughs> so I am from Germany. I was born and raised here, so I'm German. My nationality is German, but I don't look German because both of my parents are from Hong Kong or like my grandparents are from Hong Kong. My parents are from Germany as well, but they are both fully Asian, so I don't look... So I'm not mixed. <laughs> Let's say that. I'm not mixed. So, how old are you? Uh, actually, this is a part of my FAQ section in the description. I always have the most asked question in the description. And so I am 20 years old. I was born on January 14. 2001. The next question is how many siblings do you have? I have one little brother and he's 18. What are your favorite TV shows? So at the moment my favorite TV shows are Run On, True Beauty, Itaewon Class, How to Get Away with Murder, Grey's Anatomy, Supernatural, Wonder Vision, Winter Soldier and actually it's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier but I love the Winter Soldier. What is your favorite book in teenage years and the genre? So when I got this question I was like <laughs> I am old, I'm not a teenager anymore. But when I was a teenager, I used to like reading two books at the same time. I used to read one book during the day and one book at night. And during the day, I read thrillers, psycho books, like books about psychopaths and psycho thrillers and crime stories during the day. And the favorite ones that I had are from Sebastian Fitzek, who is an German author but I don't know if he also translates his book into English and other languages but um, Sebastian Fitzek at night I like to read romance books or novels and classics because I can fall asleep very easily when I read them what is your favorite season my favorite season is probably spring and summer because it all blooms it's warm the sun comes out and you can hear the birds and stuff like that but I also like winter and autumn because it's dark and cold and you can wear cozy things drink hot chocolate but you also don't have a lot of things that you can do i think all seasons have their own charm which is why i like every season to be honest but yeah what is your favorite food and dish so actually that's quite a hard question because i eat everything and i like everything i used to hate a lot but 
after like i used to be a very picky eater i really like asian cuisine like my mom my mom cooks but also italian and french and my mom cooks a lot of different stuff so everything that my mom cooks i love mm. oh my gosh i love all kinds of curry i have a weird obsession with curry and bread i don't know why but i love all kinds of bread and curry Japanese curry is the best by the way, I love it so much, I don't know why Japanese curry and then Indian curry and then Korean curry These are my favorite curries What country do you want to visit? So I had the privilege of going to a lot of country already But I really like to go back to Japan I want to travel the world to be honest So what is your favorite movie genre? Do you say genre? I don't know what to pronounce it in English actually. Genre? Genre? I don't know. Um, that's a very good question. I don't know what my favorite genre is to be honest. I don't know. I just watch movies. So, what's the bravest thing you've done? I had to think about this question quite a lot. <laughs> and to be honest, my life. In my life, I. I've made dumb decisions, I did dumb things. Maybe the bravest thing I've done was asking a guy for his number because I thought he was so handsome. But in my life I haven't done that many brave things, but let's hope I'm braver in the future. Um, what's the most memorable moment of your life? That's a question that I had to think of one week. The most memorable moment of my life. I'm 20 years old and I haven't done that much. The most memorable moment was probably when I graduated from high school, my high school prom, I don't know. That was very memorable, I will always remember. And also my class trip to Malta was very memorable. And also when someone confessed to me the first time, you always remember like the first times, so that, that was very memorable. All of my travels that I've done with my family are basically very very memorable so yeah i hope i can make a lot of memorable moments and memories in the future what is your biggest fear so i had to think about this a lot like if you see it like i'm not scared of a lot of things like spiders or so the only thing that i'm scared of is mummies like the ones that are in egypt i don't know why but I think when I was very young, I saw a movie about mummies and that's, that kind of traumatized me. I don't know why. I'm not scared of anything else, like dead bodies or something like that. I'm not scared of that. But mummies, I don't know why. I don't know. I'm also scared of being alone when I'm older or not being able to express my feelings that well because I'm very bad at it and also that my family and friends and my loved ones are getting hurt or yeah I'm also scared of not living the life that I want not enjoying all of the moments to the fullest extent possible and not being able to do something that makes me happy that's what I'm scared of next question is what is your MBTI type? I've done the test a week ago and I got INFJ-A or INFJ-T, so I'm an advocate. And I think it's pretty, pretty true. I read the description and I was like, wait, that's, that's pretty much me. <laughs> so yes, I am an INFJ-A. What do you like to do the most in your free time? I used to dance a lot in my free time and meet my friends, read, play the piano but at the moment I really like to just lay in my bed and do nothing. I like to watch Netflix a lot and spend time with my friends and family. That's what I love the most. So I think these were all, these were all the questions that I head and now let's head over to the next section which is youtube so how did you get the idea to start youtube so i always made vlogs when i was like 12 or 15 years old so i was very inspired by all those youtubers back then but recently like when i started my channel i was very into study vlogs and i was so really wanted to make one and i made one for igtv 
and I thought why not start YouTube just did and I did it I'm a bit embarrassed so it's kind of cringy but I thought like whatever just do it I mean you can always delete the channel and no one is going to ever watch it that's what I thought but now people are actually watching my vlogs and commenting nice things so that's interesting <laughs> I'm very happy and grateful for for every comment I get so thank you very much for watching my videos because <laughs> It's very nice to know that there are actually people that I can motivate. Why is your name Warfloster? I think it's very funny because I was inspired by a movie and a book called Perks of Being a Warflower. And to be honest, when I gave myself this name, I did not watch the movie or read the book. I know what you're thinking. It could have been really bad if the book and movie weren't my taste but they actually were and i really liked that and i had this name for my instagram account for four years i think already so back then it f fit me a lot because my personality was sort of like a wallflower but to be honest right now i don't really identify as a wallflower anymore but that name is still me so i think i can't change it um, even though I actually thought about changing it. What is your YouTube income? Income because I don't do a lot of ads and if you see any ads like during the video like a lot I only do three ads during the video like in the beginning in the middle and in the end but sometimes YouTube does it itself and it's annoying because I don't see them because I don't watch my own videos but sometimes I take a look at them and then I see like there are like five ads in one video and I'm like what the hell is going on? So yeah, so I made over a 12 week cycle, 87 dollars or euros, I don't know actually. So now let's head over to the study related questions and the first question is where do you like to study the cafe, the library or at home? So to be honest, I like the idea of studying somewhere else like at a cafe with coffee and a piece of cake but I don't drink coffee because I get a stomach ache by from it I get a stomach ache from coffee so I can't drink coffee actually but you know I like the idea of it and yes but the reality is I have to carry all of my stuff to the cafe where a lot of people are talking so I like to study at home more or in a study room but we don't have those in Germany actually so how to stay concentrated so that's a question I get a lot and a lot of people just assume that I'm very concentrated all the time but that's actually not the case I get distracted a lot as well and I'm not always concentrated but tips that I can give you is just turn off your phone change the position where you are sitting change the chair change the room if you can Write down the distracting thoughts because sometimes you get distracted by a lot of things. Like if you would see my screen, you would see that I suddenly do online shopping. Like mid-studying, I do online shopping. Why? I don't know, but that's what I do. What also keeps me concentrated is having five minute dance breaks. So every hour I just dance for five minutes to two songs and then I feel very energized and that's a good way to get your energy out. Yes, can you picture yourself studying something else? And to be honest, no, I would always go for medicine. Like I would always decide to study medicine again because I just love medicine so much. You can't imagine how passionate I am and how much medicine actually means to me so I would not want to study something else and I can't imagine studying something because medicine makes me very happy that leads to the next question why did you decide or when did you realize that you wanted to become a doctor so I don't actually know when I thought oh my gosh I want to become a doctor and I don't know why I thought that but when I had biology in fifth grade, I was very fascinated by the human body and I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. And I immediately knew that I either wanted to do something with biology and, and natural sciences 
or with languages because I actually like languages as well like French and Spanish then I suddenly, I, don't, I really don't know when but I suddenly thought I want to become a doctor and at first I wanted to become a pathologist but after my grandpa died because of a heart attack I realized that I really want to become a doctor and I suddenly knew that that's exactly what I want to do because when when my parents told me about it and when like all the hospital stuff I don't want to be black I don't want to talk bad about the doctors that treated my grandpa but they didn't really give the feeling of like they tried their best and I know that's I know I shouldn't say that because you, you don't know but a few things could have went that's actually my motivation why I want to become a doctor because I realized that doctors make mistakes and doctors are not perfect and as a doctor you your job is not only to treat the patient and cure him because you can't cure every patient like you can't make everyone healthy again that's just that's life, that's how life is, and that's something that you have to realize if you want to become a doctor, you can't help everyone, you can't cure everyone, but you can help everyone. Helping someone doesn't always include giving them medical treatment so they are free of their illness, but also to, to give them empathy, to understand what they are feeling and what they are going through, and to accompany them on their way and to give them not only the best medical treatment possible but also the best human not human interaction but like the best compassion that you can give i don't know if that's a word and that's basically why i decided to become a doctor because i want to do better than the doctors that treated my grandpa <laughs> i know it sounds weird and people will probably come at me but that's something that's my biggest motivation is to just give patients and their, their relatives a feeling of security and that they know I'm trying all I can, I'm giving all I can to help them. So that's when I knew that I wanted to become a doctor. and. Yeah, after I did a few volunteering work in old people's home, I realized that I'm pretty good at dealing with people. <laughs> it sounds weird, but I'm pretty good at dealing with complicated people, like old people, people with dementia and ill people. So I knew it's what I want to do because I actually had a lot of fun and after a few hospital internships, I knew, I just knew it was right, I don't know why, it just, it just feels right it's weird to explain but i felt like i felt like everything just went into a place whenever i was in the hospital and working with like the doctors and walk around and saw surgeries i just felt like that's what i was supposed to do in my life and that's exactly why i want to become a doctor and also of course like i'm fascinated by all of the things that by the human body but these are basically the reasons why I wanted to become a doctor in the first place and I don't think that there's anything else that fits me better than that, to be honest. I think, I hope that I can become a good doctor, but I don't know. I'm working hard to become a good doctor, just to make people feel good and feel self safe and to help them as good as I can. <laughs> okay, so the next question is how to stay motivated and how to study when you are demotivated. So, why is the camera so weird? Okay, so motivation is something that comes and goes. So if you study with motivation, it's definitely easier, but motivation shouldn't be the, I don't know, not the reason, but the, the push why you are studying. Because as I mentioned, motivation is temporary like you can't be motivated 100% of the time how I get motivation is I watch study vlogs and remind myself of my goals and stuff and also take a break but what's more important than motivation is discipline if you are disciplined 
you can get more done and you don't need motivation to start in the first place. And how to study if you're demotivated, just don't think about it. I know it's it's like very dumb, but don't think about the process of going to your desk, sitting down, studying all the things that you don't even want to study or something like that. Just don't think about it and try to have fun while doing everything that you do in your life. Because studying can be fun and I think if you enjoy the process, it's much easier than being motivated to do something. So instead of being motivated, be disciplined and enjoy it. Don't see it as a chore, see it as something that will bring you further in life and also don't forget to take breaks because breaks are important, resting is important. You don't have to do a lot to feel like you need a rest. I think that's, oh my god, it's not even the question but I think it's very important so I'm gonna add it. Most of the times I feel guilty if I don't do anything, if I don't study, if I rest and we don't have to feel guilty for it even though if you're like if you didn't study a lot the day before and you feel like oh my god i want a rest day again or you just rested a day and you feel like you still want to rest you don't have to feel bad about it because your body needs it your mind needs it and if you are not motivated or if you're like not motivated but if you feel like you want to rest then that's probably the best what you should what you can do because you deserve to rest any time of the week any time of the day despite of what you've done so far what you what you haven't done you know so don't feel bad or guilty if you want to rest and don't don't skip resting okay we are not skipping rest days do you have negative feelings when you study being afraid to fail or not having enough time how do you overcome those feelings i think everyone has those feelings but not everyone is talking about those feelings and i do have them a lot especially in my last exam season in before i had my anatomy exam exam i was very anxious and scared of failing and not having enough time i was very stressed out and put myself under a lot of pressure so what i did to overcome those feelings i'm not good at coping with them but i just try to remind myself that people before me have done it and also that why should i fail I mean, of course, there are reasons to fail, but if you think about all those things that could happen, you can also think of the positive things that could happen, like you could succeed in the exam. Maybe you have enough time, maybe you don't need to learn all of this. And just don't think about things that didn't happen yet. I know it's very hard to say, but remind yourself that what if it doesn't happen? What if you don't fail the exam? What would happen if you don't fail it? Because as high as the possibility is that you fail, the possibility is as high that you succeed in it. Maybe we should all focus on the other half of it, right? So I try to focus on the positive things and try to remind myself that I'm good enough and that I can do it and that even though I don't have enough time, it's okay because that's okay, that's life. Things happen like that. What I do when I get a bad grade for a top for exam that I study for a lot. So something that my mom always told me is that if you give it all you've got and you're best, like I just mentioned before, the outcome is not that important. Like what can you do besides giving it your best, you know, like you can't do more than you can. And failing is not always something that's based on what you can do, but also what the exam is made of, of the, of the teacher and how they grade it and stuff. It's not always, it's not always depending on your performance. And when I get a bad grade, I used to cry a lot and feel bad about myself, but now I don't do it anymore. I just take a look uh, at, do I regret doing something? Do I regret like not studying enough? Did I have a feeling that I didn't study enough? Did I actually not study enough? Did I forget to study something? Like, I try to think of reasons why I got this grade. I look at the mistakes that I make and rather than focusing on a bad grade, focus on how you can make it better the next time. And if I see that I made a mistake multiple times, I would try to get rid of it and to understand why I made that mistake. So I try to understand why I got the bad grade, even though I studied a lot, you know? Okay, so I'm actually almost finished with all the questions. The last question is, 
What do you do when you get tired and don't finish everything you had planned? Go to sleep. Sleep is the most important thing. Your brain needs sleep, your body needs sleep. You need time to recover from all the studying that you did and you can be proud of whatever you've done the day, no matter how much you've done. Because that you get got things done in the first place is very good and even though if you didn't get anything done, you deserved you deserve to sleep and if you're tired then go to sleep. Remember that I try to remember that I'm human and I'm not able to finish everything and that I'm not able to get everything done that I've planned to do. And also you are the only one that decides what you should get done the day and maybe you just overestimate your, not yourself but maybe you take longer time to do one task. And I don't think it's bad to not finish everything you've done. I mean, it kind of stresses you out, of course. It stresses me out a lot as well, but try to remember that it's okay to not finish everything and that you've got another day where you can finish it. And don't be too hard on yourself because you are doing great, better than you assume you are doing. And that's why you shouldn't feel bad about not finishing anything and go to sleep. Prioritize yourself and your sleep because sleep is the most important your brain needs it a lot so that's the end of the q a i hope you liked it and i hope that i answered a few questions of course i couldn't answer every question but i try to answer them as much uh, i try to answer as much questions as possible so we can see each other in my next vlog <laughs> i know this video was a bit different and I think you could feel my personality a bit more throughout the video, even though I tried to express my facial expressions through emojis. And I hope that you enjoyed it and thank you a lot for watching <laughs> and see you in my next video. How many... I was restricted... I was very why can't I talk? <laughs> uh, someone rang someone rang the bell. <laughs> um with actual actual with